Hey guys, it's me, Krista Marie Miller with The Unpopular Opinion, and this is for Whose Side Are You On This Week. Now, this is for the feud with Noella versus everyone else. So, I had this pinned, and then originally I thought that OC was going to air last night, and it did not because we had the Vanderpump reunion. However, I'm still going to do this one, um, and what I'm doing is I'm going to have two people on with us tonight, um, George Carolina and Kristen the Math Nerd. Um, but right now, what I want to do is just do my opinion with Noella, because first I'm going to address Noella versus everyone else. Now, this is what Emily Simpson just said in an interview with Us Weekly. I mean, there's a lot of he said, she said going on right now. Yeah. Are you about the divorce with Noella? And, you know, who's kind of, like, who do you believe? That's a, that's a difficult question, because in the beginning, when I first met Noella, I was very, very much on her side and believing so her, because I had nothing to compare it to, right? He's not on the show. He's not giving his viewpoint. So the only thing I have to go by is, you know, what she's telling me. And of course, I want to support her and be a friend to her. Um, now that all this stuff is coming out and he's releasing statements and his attorneys are releasing statements, I will tell you as an attorney, I jump all over that stuff. Mm -hmm. I read all of it. I listen to it. I decipher it. I go back to what messy, she right? told me on what dates. Emily. I make timelines. So I will tell you. I can blow cold through a lot of things. Wow. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. What do you think? She told me recently that she's basically squatting in her 10,000 square foot mansion. I well, mean, first of all, who calls their house a mansion? Right. Like, you go there. Like, what is this? Does she have a moat? Is there a dragon? Like, I don't understand. Like, why does she have to say mansion? Real quick, Emily, a moat is when you have, like, and a dragon is when you have a, like, a castle. Not a mansion, honey. Not a mansion. That, a castle has a moat and a dragon, honey. But whatever. What do I know? But secondly, as far as what I read from documents, the lease was up. So, if, and I don't know what, what their financial arrangement was. Maybe he was still financially obligated to pay the lease, their lease, and then that was it. So I don't know oh, if she separated means divorce means you don't have to pay for it anymore. Should find somewhere else to live. Maybe, yeah. she, maybe not a mansion. Right. Do you think it's Our fair castle. for her to, you know, because she had this really, in this upcoming episode, she has this really awkward conversation with Heather about calling her like a phony shit or fake oh, yeah. bitch. I did watch that. I did watch that. Right. And it's just like, do you feel like she's kind of using her divorce almost as an excuse now to kind of say mean That's things where I'm going with people? this. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I do believe that that is kind of an ongoing theme throughout the rest of the season where it's like, yes, we've feel badly for you like no one wants you to be in this situation but you can't you know she's be moved the on by the way no. and be hostile but then when someone calls Very you out quickly. on being aggressive go right back again, to the victim way. mode and i'm going through a lot you know so i mean i'll be noelle is interesting she really is because she she has I'm really disappointed because i love emotion, noelle so <laughs> This is the Us Weekly in interview with Emily. Well, she does them once a like week. Rolling. The housewives. Yeah, actually, she she will text a little bit, and I will text back. And I, you know, I don't have any ill will towards her at all, and I do want what's best for her. Okay. And you know. Now, um, of course, this like Heather uh, Debro thing is ridiculous. Um, Noella, when you walked into walked onto the um, set, I really thought you had this like great energy about you. I thought you'd be a positive influence on the group i thought you would bring like a nice young vibe you were open and like you've completely ruined it like for me anyway so i can't even say i'm on your side noella um you come to Cabo. okay first of all you go into heather's podcasting room and you like blow it all up and say it's like you know she's a narcissist and all that crap like that's ridiculous first of all like that's a little bit of a reach I believe that you decided since, or somebody told you to do this, that you knew going into this that everybody was going to be kissing Heather DeBrose's ass. And you were right, because they all did, and you were going against the grain, which is good housewife. I mean, that is good housewife stuff to do. But then you got to remember what happened to Bronwyn. Bronwyn read the housewife handbook, and she threw it all out there at once, kind of like you have, and also did some extra stuff, and what happened to her? So, Noella, I'm not sure if you're going to be starting to, well, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to you. But um, the thing with Heather Debro and everyone else, like, you sat at that table, so we see next week's episode, and admitted about how you talked crap on everybody and you keep blaming it on your divorce. But you can't expect these women that want to be friends with you. And, like, how would you expect Heather Debro to want you in Cabo? Now, housewife talk, yes. As a fan, 
besides this, as a fan, yes. Would I want you to be in combo? Absolutely. For Housewife drama, absolutely. Do you deserve to be there? No. If I were Heather, I wouldn't want you there either. Like, you know, you can't make somebody want you there, you know? So, but for Housewife, yes, obviously. But then we see that when you get there, okay, first of all, you were late. You weren't supposed to be there, okay? You weren't supposed to fly on a, um, a private plane, right? But you were late, and you are, so I don't know what you talk, a commercial coach, I don't know, whatever. But you use the excuse that you forgot to get your, um, you forgot to bring your passport because you've been flying private, a private jet for so long, as you have a jet, for so long that you forgot how this common folk thing works, right? Whatever, I call bullshit, but listen. For somebody who's squatting in their house, I don't think you have really a fucking goddamn thing to say, okay? Whatever. Then you get to Cabo. You get to the door. First of all, you're in a car with every Uber driver or driver, and you have to tell them your life story. Nobody cares, okay? Then you get to the house, and nobody's there to greet you. You were late. You didn't call. Nothing. You get there. You expect somebody to greet you when you're late, and you've been so disrespectful to the host. Again, get over yourself. You get dressed. Again, you're trying to tell the bartenders your life story. Nobody cares. Your husband left you. Like, we cared like three weeks ago when you were nice and then you became a bitch. Um, okay, so then you go to dinner and, of course, you walk in with an attitude and you think everybody's talking about you, which they were because they should be. But anyway, you walk up and you order, I don't know, would you order food or something? And then the food comes and you don't eat it, but you're drinking. And somebody just mentions you to eat and then you think they're food shaming you. And then you like excuse yourself to go to the bathroom with Gina, and then you say that, are you allowed to? Or, or, or Gina, which I don't know why Gina did that. It's not Gina. Emily said that Heather was upset, or she thinks it's rude that you didn't eat the food, and you take it as Heather the bird cares if you eat your food or not. And you're acting again like you could care less, and you think she's thirsty, and you think she's all these things. Thirsty, honey, is when you're doing the things that the housewives do when they read the housewife handbook to stay a housewife. That's what thirsty is. Okay, remember that. Or when you listen to production. That's what thirsty is. That's what you're doing. And then you come back and you have something about eating your potatoes. Like, Bromwin vibes, Bromwin vibes, like, whatever. So, yeah. So that's mine. And, oh, and there's this is the only other thing I find hilarious. Because I am no fan of Teddy Mellencamp. I don't even know why I just said her name. I call Freddie. Fetch. Because she's trying to make it happen. Everybody's trying to make Fetch happen. Kyle tried to make Fetch happen. I don't know how the hell Tamara ended up on her podcast. Because Teddy's podcast was... Two T's in a pod, now Timer's on there, and now it's making money. And then you get your dad, and now your dad's on tour. John Mellencamp, you put him out on tour. Again, he's like 80, with Bruce Springsteen, who's like 80. And you're trying to make that happen. Like, and then you're on the podcast. And you admit, okay, so you admit on the podcast that you had to go to therapy when you were let go of the housewives after, what, one season as a friend or something, wherever, whatever you were. I don't even remember, but... Um, yeah, you needed to go to therapy because it was like the end of the world to you. And then when Noella makes a comment that, um, <laughs> you're like, wait, what did she say? I know my life's over or my life, when I'm a loser, when I'm, I end up on a podcast or something like that. Basically saying when you end up as a housewife of a podcast, you're a loser. And that you know you've lost in life. That's what she said. Now this is coming from somebody who is squatting in their mansion. Okay, honey. You have been so desperate to get on the housewife show that you literally made your husband left you. Yeah, he had to leave you. So, um, as much as I don't like f Fetch, Teddy Mountain Camp, I mean, I thought it probably, it was pretty funny that you said that in a while of it. Like, you know, you're losing in life when you get kicked off the housewives and you end up with a podcast. And then I find it funny that Teddy keeps saying it, but she's the one who was in therapy for being kicked off the housewives. And then she, I heard her today, this is like, I can't stand Teddy Mountain Camp. I got a bitch without her for a second. I decided to listen to it today, right? And I think she was on, who was she on with? Of course, she was on with Tamara, but she was saying something about Noella again. Um, forget it. Oh, 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 Vicky was on there. And Vicky at one point, this is a couple years ago, Kay Casey, when she first started, she wanted to interview Vicky. And Vicky said something to the fact that I'll never run a podcast. Like, it was, she was way too good for podcasts. Podcasters were losers. Um, they don't get paid. And that's like the lowest of the low. And here now she's on Tamara's podcast and she's fighting with Tamara because Tamara, she's upset that Tamara didn't do a podcast with her first. So now that this bitch gets kicked off the house, kicked off the housewives, Steve leaves her. And now she's on and she's bitching that she wants to do a podcast because she's so desperate to get back on. Now, when you talk about Thirsty, you have Tamara, Teddy, and Vicky. So, 
Oh, and then another thing, like, this has nothing to do with whose side you're on, but listen to this. So apparently on the podcast, you heard Vicky and Tamara talking about, she's asking Vicky, who was, Vicky getting over Steve Lodge, right? V- Tamara goes, oh, I thought that uh, you would have a harder time getting over Brooks, not Steve, you know, because Steve's so horrible. And I thought you, like, uh, you know, Brooks was harder to get over and Brooks was better. Basically saying Brooks is better than Steve. Tamara's opinion is that Steve Lodge is worse than Brooks somehow. And now I don't know if she's drinking the Vicky Kool-Aid, all that Kool-Aid that was all over the internet, but she's basically alluding that Steve is worse than Brooks. Brooks is the one who faked cancer, remember? All right, guys. So this is for whose side you on. I'm going to attach this to the link for the live that's tonight, Thursday. I don't know the date. Don't even ask. Um, and then I'm going to have you guys, you can comment in the live chat, comment below, tell me whose side you're on. We're also going to also talk about this later each side and then I um, also have some other like podcast stuff to explain. Heather DeBurr once a week explains um, the episode of stuff we don't see and it explains a lot about Noella and the lies and it just makes more sense but I'm not going to let you guys guess. I'm going to let you guys listen later and decide and listen you don't have to be on my side just pick your own side and just tell me how you got there. Tell me whose side you're on and why and then I will drop the link later if you do want to call in. Um, I will have two people on with me and guys if this goes well and I can do this the right way I'll do it every week so. All right, see you guys later.